Welcome to this Franklin Public Schools 1 to 1 Chromebook Family Overview video. During this video, we'll be reviewing materials that are mentioned in the FPS 1 to 1 Handbook and giving parents and guardians a general overview of how our 1 to 1 program works here in Franklin. Some of the parent and guardian takeaways expected to be learned during this video. What is a Chromebook and how does it work? What can I expect my child to do on the Chromebook? What should our family do to help keep my child safe when online using the Chromebook? What does responsible use mean for my child and family? Who will be financially responsible for repairs and loss or damage? And what is the process for repairs? So to start, we first like to cover what is a Chromebook. So we have this intro video to a Chromebook that we'd like to share with you. This is a laptop. This is a computer. This has the web. That's weird. Okay, so it's the web. There are no programs. So there's nothing to start up. Then how do I do stuff? There's no messy desktop. So no rolling hills of green. Can I use it anywhere? On a unicycle? My calendars, emails, documents. Everything can be saved to the web. That's crazy. So I could throw this thing into a river. And I won't lose my stuff? It doesn't need virus protection. What about annoying updates? Or patches. Or patches for the patches. So it gets better in real time. I wonder if people are ready for this. It's kind of a new thought. So as the video shared, the Chromebook will work on Wi-Fi. It will not work with an Ethernet cord or a network cord as there is no port on the device. So it does require Wi-Fi for most needs. The Chromebooks are specifically set up by the school district to only work with student at franklinsabers.org account. So only students will be able to sign in with their student account on the Chromebook. Gmail, Calendar, and Drive do have an offline mode, so in the event that you don't have Wi-Fi at home, students during their Chromebook camp will be shown how to enable offline mode so they can still read emails, compose emails, they can still uh, pull up files that they might have been working on in class, work on those even when they don't have a Wi-Fi connection present. We picked the Chromebook because it does meet most of our curricular needs. We still have other devices available in the schools. We have tablets, we have Mac machines, Windows machines for some programs that are specifically suited for Mac or Windows that are available during school time. The district does provide a required case for the Chromebook. The Chromebook should be kept with the case so that it protects the device during movement and travel, protect it from drops or spills, uh, and then it also helps to protect it when it's in the locker and the device should be kept in the locker during the school day when not needed. Outside of the school day, the device is required to be taken home. The Chrome Web Store is also filtered by the district. We do have approved apps and extensions that students can add, similar to what you might do on your phone. If you have an iPhone or an Android phone and you get apps from the store, Chrome has their own web store where students can put apps or extensions on their Chromebook that will work in the browser. And again, we do filter and only allow certain apps and extensions to be used. This is a picture of the high school case. It's a, it's a slip-in case. Uh, it tends to fit in a backpack, so if a student does have a backpack, then the device can go in there just for extra cushioning. Grades 5 through 8 have what is called the keep-in case. The device sits in the case. You can see the straps at uh, the top corners and the bottom corners help to keep the device in the case. Uh, it acts like a little brief case, has a shoulder strap, and so we do require that the Chromebook stays in the keep-in cases at all times for grades 5 through 8. And the Chrome Web Store, as we mentioned, does have other apps available, which will have students add apps and extensions here and there for school use. 
As far as what you can expect to see your child doing, this is a comprehensive list of our Franklin Information Technology Literacy Standards and Skills. This list uh, is really our focus for one-to-one. -one. These are the types of things students would be doing on the Chromebook, and this includes writing and revising, uh, collaborating on group projects, gathering data, analyzing data, presenting information visually. We're gonna teach students soft skills about managing their personal time through things like using a calendar or, or to-do lists or tasks. Uh, they'll be communicating using email. And a lot of our curriculum now is completely web-based, which makes the Chromebook a good fit so students can access that curriculum wherever they are. Online safety is a very important piece of our one-to-one -one program. So when the question is asked, does the device have web filtering? Yes, it does. But with that, we do want to be specific in stating that Franklin Public Schools will provide content filtering on the device when off campus to the extent that it is possible. So our web filtering works when students are on campus as well as when they are off campus if they're at home or connected to any other Wi-Fi. That being said, we do realize that sometimes systems go down or sometimes there um, might be things that do get through the web filtering until they're, they're noticed and, and we can properly block them. Uh, so we do want to be realistic in that approach. So we do ask for parents help in that and making sure that when students are at home they're using their device maybe in a public area so that you can see what students are working on, maybe if students are sitting at the kitchen table and, and things of that nature. If a student does encounter a blocked site, this is a typical screenshot of what that site would look like that would show uh, that the site is blocked by our web filtering system. As far as responsible use expectations and care, we realize that these devices being in the home might be a big change for some families, and we want to work to collectively prepare young people for the education and for the working world of today, being that they now have a device in their possession. So our one-to-one -one program does follow our district's acceptable use policy. Uh, this is a policy that is signed off on by parents and students as part of our back-to-school online check-in, so please make sure that you thoroughly read that. This is also linked up in our resources at the end of the video. When students are outside of school, we did want to give parents and guardians some helpful tips and things to think about and maybe to have discussions around. We do want to stress to students that it is a privilege to bring the device home to assist with their schoolwork. The expectation is that students do charge the device nightly and bring the school charge, bring the device to school charged each day. So think about at home and have a discussion with the child about where is the best place to charge that device. Maybe it's on a kitchen counter so that it's grabbed um, and, and taken out the morning, taken out as students go get on the bus in the morning, or maybe it's a desk somewhere in the home or, or something like that. We do also ask that chargers do stay at home. We want the devices to come to school charged and we also don't want the risk of chargers being lost. We also don't want the risk of charger cords being all over the place in the classroom and, and causing anyone to trip. So please do keep that charger at home and please do charge that device nightly. This does introduce a new set of responsibilities and issues that could take place at home. So please have those kinds of conversations. Uh, please do monitor that internet use at home. Talk with your child about what is appropriate use, when, what times. We realize also that screen time is now a big part of our world. And so we are working to actively find that good balance between too much screen time and, and enough screen time to also uh, get schoolwork done. We want to encourage discussions between parents and guardians, sons, daughters, about how they are using the device. So ask them what they're doing, ask to see samples of their work, ask them to show you what they did during school that day. We want this to be part of an open uh, conversation that parents and students have. We do realize that when the device is at your home, you can restrict home use of the device as you see fit, as you're right as a parent or guardian. We just like to explicitly state that since that's, this device will now be a part of your culture at home. We do realize that finding a good balance between screen time and personal actions is getting harder with the more devices that are around us. Um, so please have that as part of your conversation with your child as well about certain times when, when devices or, or screen time will be in use versus times where uh, screens can be put away. You may also want to discuss a policy in your home about um, device turn in before bed or always using devices in a common area, um, things that'll just help to avoid problems that could happen later. So what happens in the event that there needs to be a repair or there's some technical issues with the Chromebook? What should happen is that the student should talk first with the classroom teacher. At that point, the classroom teacher will decide if something is significant enough to be passed on to the tech depot in the library. All of our libraries are housed with a tech depot where students can turn in a device for repair. Uh, at that point, if a device is checked in, an automatic email notification will go to the family, just letting them know that the device was checked in for some reason at the tech depot. We do ask that if you get that email notification to please talk with your child about why the device was turned in if you were not aware that the device was to be turned in. 
If the device is turned in for repair or a fix, the child will be provided a loaner Chromebook while that device goes out for repair. While the device is out for repair, if there are charges to be issued, the charges for those repairs will be applied to the student's fee account. We also ask that you do work through this process with the Tech Depot. These are district devices. These are owned by the district. Therefore, we have to follow our repair procedures with the specific company that does our repairs. Parents should not try to fix things themselves or take the device to uh, another location for a repair. We do need to work through the Tech Depot. We do have a repair list in our handbook, our one-to-one -one handbook that I will show you here in a second. We have worked to reduce the costs so that typical charges hover around $20 for average uh, breakage issues. If there is something that warrants a higher cost or a full device replacement, then the cost can be above that $20 mark. When the repair is complete, the family and the student will be notified that the device is ready for pickup. Devices are also turned in for the summer, so that procedure will be shared as the school year winds down. So how will students learn what is needed on the Chromebook? Well, students in grades 5 through 11 have already been using Google Apps, and many have used Chromebooks in class, so they're very familiar with these devices. We also have a Chromebook camp that takes place for students in the one-to-one -one program during the first few days of school. So for new devices, students will unbox, will register the device with the district. They'll learn how to care for the device and use and maintain the device. If students are being reissued their same device from last year, um, they'll receive that same device back and then they'll be ch uh, charging it at home. They will also go through some Chromebook camp refreshers as well. And part of these Chromebook camp sessions also focus on digital citizenship and making sure that students are learning what it means to be a good digital citizen with this device. As far as other resources that may be helpful to you, we do have this list here and we'll leave this up on screen as well as these links are also in the uh, videos description box. If you are done with this video, you can find these in the description box. Franklin has a one-to-one -one website that looks like the screenshot there at the right. Uh, so you can get to that by going to this tiny URL. When you do enter this tiny URL, make sure you do so in the address bar of your browser. Don't do a search for this. That doesn't work. You have to type this in the address bar. As well as we have links for the handbook, we have links to a Chromebook tour page that just goes over what it means to be using a Chromebook, to this presentation, these slides, this video. Uh, we have a frequently asked questions that we've been building over our years of doing one-to-one. -one. That is also available on the one-to-one -one site, so that's a good place to go first and see if your question has already been answered. If it hasn't been answered, we do have a form available on the site, um, as well as an email address where you can write in with questions. We do ask if you could please submit the question through the form. We like to keep track of those all in one place, and then we add those to our frequently asked questions uh, as we go. So thank you again for taking the time to watch this video. We've given you some places to go where uh, you can follow up if you have some questions as well as you can always talk with either your classroom teacher or your principal at your school. Thanks again and we look forward to another successful year of our one-to-one -one program.